Let us analyze the mind map of schedule management. So under initiation, planning, execution, monitoring and controlling and closing. The processes related to project schedule management are active under planning and monitoring and controlling only. Under planning, we have plan, schedule management, define activities, sequence activities, estimate activity durations, and develop schedule. And under monitoring and controlling, we have the control schedule part of it. Now, plan schedule management in very large projects when the number of stakeholders are very, very high, we have to decide on the type of tools to be used, uh, the frequency of updates, the uh, rules of credit. So, how, how are you going to work out the percentage completions and the frequency of updates to the schedule? and how the interfaces between schedules will happen if you have to do a bottom-up planning, bottom-up monitoring or top-down monitoring, a drill-down analysis on the schedule, so how it is going to happen. So all these things need to be worked out as part of uh, plan schedule management. Then define activities. At this stage, we have the work breakdown structure and we have the work packages. So this is the time when we decompose the work packages into activities. And then we sequence those activities. And when we talk about activity sequencing, we have to remember about those two diagrams, that is activity on arrow diagram and the activity on node diagram. Uh, both have the critical path. Critical path is the longest path in the network, is known as the critical path. Uh, activity on arrow can be used only for limited number of activities. If the project is very small, then we can use activity on arrow. And activity on arrow uses dummy lines, that is a dotted line lines to show dependencies. And activity on arrow can show only finish to start dependencies, whereas the activity on node can show all the four types of dependencies like finish to start, finish to finish, start to start, and the start to finish. And the activity on node or precedence diagramming method, uh, this is most widely used in most of the uh, software is used for scheduling because it is easily scalable. Uh, in order to arrive at the critical path using a precedence diagramming method, we do a forward pass and calculate the early start and the early finish. Then we do a backward pass and calculate the late start and late finish. And float is equal to late start minus early start or late finish minus early finish. So we arrive at the float of every activity on the network and we connect all those activities whose float is equal to zero. That becomes the critical path. And the key things to be remembered here is a project can have multiple critical paths. Uh, and if multiple, multiple paths have zero float, there can be multiple critical paths. And a project with multiple critical paths is very complex to handle. So in order to ensure that there are no slippages on the schedules, uh, even tracking or monitoring and controlling those paths with minimum float, that is also very, very important because if that float is lost, then straight away those paths also can become critical path. So it is very evident that during the execution of the project, critical path can change. So it has to be monitored and activities on the critical path have zero float and they should not slip. If they slip by one day, the project will slip. 
we also discussed about buffer and float uh, and there is something called negative float a delayed task which is delayed beyond is it's a late finish is known as a, a, a will have a negative float then estimate activity durations uh, here the tools and techniques used for activity estimating the activity durations are almost same as uh, estimating the cost so here also we use analogous estimation parametric estimation three point estimation and expert judgment so once we have all these things then we uh, then we get into develop schedule and then we get into control schedule as part of uh, monitoring and controlling. Schedule management comprises of, these are the processes we have discussed, plan schedule management, define activities, sequence activities, estimate activity durations, develop schedule and control schedule. Tools and techniques, decomposition, uh, we are discussing about two levels of decomposition. Uh, the first level of decomposition, we were uh, talking about decomposition. Uh, there are two types of decomposition. Uh, the first one is decomposing the scope document into work breakdown structure. Now here we are talking about decomposing the work packages into activities. Then uh, we have this rolling wave planning or the moving window planning. That means for the immediate window of work, we will have detailed, fully blown uh, activity level planning and things falling far away, we will not, we will have only a milestone level planning. We call it as a rolling wave planning or a moving window planning. If you know agile project management, even if you draw a roadmap for the entire project, we will do detailed planning only for the current window of 30 days. And the things falling beyond that 30 days will be only at a very high level. Whereas the current window of 30 days, we will have fully detailed activity level plans. Then uh, precedence diagramming method we discussed. Uh, precedence diagramming method is also known as activity on node diagram or AON or PDM, both are same. Then dependency de determination and integration. So this is uh, which activity should happen first, which must happen next. So all these things are done through expert judgment. Then leads and lags, when we say Lead uh, compresses the schedule and lags bring elongates the schedule. Lead means parallelism, lag means waiting time. And uh, project management information system, we discussed, already we discussed these things in detail. Then analogous estimation, parametric, three point, bottom up analysis. Uh, schedule network analysis, we already discussed about the forward pass and arriving at the early start and the early finish. Then a backward pass and working out the late start and late finish. So that is an example of schedule network analysis. Critical path method, we already discussed. So again, it is the forward pass, backward pass, float calculation and connecting all the activities whose float is equal to zero, that becomes the critical path. Then a resource optimization. Uh, that means when we resource optimization slash resource leveling. So when we load resources to the activities, sometimes some of the resources will get overloaded and some other resources may get underloaded. So through trial and error, we have to ensure that every resource is loaded optimally so that process is known as resource optimization then agile release planning we'll be talking about these uh, agile release planning in detail when we get into the agile part of the course uh, now here uh, and 
what is an agile release planning at a high level if i have initially when i start with the new product uh, i have a set of requirements and i sequence those requirements on a timeline by this day by next 30 days time we'll be completing this many features another 30 days in the next 30 days time this many features so sprint 1 or iteration 1 this many features will be completing iteration 2 this many features will be completing iteration 3 4 5 kind of thing and first three iterations at the end of the third iteration we'll do a release first release of the product after seven iterations we'll make the second release of the product and after 10 iterations we'll make the third release of the product so this kind of planning we call as a release planning or agile release planning then a schedule compression we use two techniques fast tracking and crashing fast tracking is all about trying to do things in parallel which were originally scheduled sequentially and crashing is about putting more resources into the activity so that the activity duration can be compressed that is crashing and uh, some of the key activities uh, during uh, project schedule management uh, associated with project schedule management are the schedule management plan itself activity list activity attributes is additional character characteristics of the uh, activities if you have used a ms project on the activity if you do a right click it will show a lot of additional parameters to be captured like what is the predecessor what is the successor a detailed description of the activity so those kind of things uh, at a work package level we had we discussed about wbs dictionaries Uh, this is something similar to that at a activity level then a milestone list project schedule network diagrams duration estimates and the basis of estimates a schedule baseline that means once the schedule is completed and approved we release the schedule as a the version number version 1.0 and or 1.1 or 1.2 or 2.0 but then afterwards any changes to the schedule will have to be will have to follow the change management process for schedules then uh, the schedule data uh, the data associated with the schedule we call it a schedule data because we need to back it up <coughs> uh, then project calendars uh, that is uh, when we are configuring a schedule for the first time we have to define the organization's calendar we have to block out all the holidays and the number you know, number of shifts everything we have to define uh, and that becomes the project calendar and the by referring to this project calendar only the project durations are estimated so if a uh, uh, a part of the schedule if it's going to take this a 30 days time that will exclude all the holidays uh, and after that only it works out the uh, the calendar dates then uh, work performance uh, information it is about statusing the schedule uh, on what percentage of work was planned and completed and schedule forecast like we do cost forecast we can also do schedule forecast by looking at the how much uh, we were supposed to complete as of today how much we completed today so based on that we can always forecast the expected completion of that milestone which can be even the project completion date so with this explanation uh, i'm sure that if you will be able to Uh, go back to pimbok version 6 and read the pages 173 to 230 and uh, it'll be easy for you to understand the concepts there uh, with this introduction thank you very much